we are making a zine out of one sheet of paper. You guys can find detailed instructions on how to do this over at scholastic.com. I will put a link in the description below. I've already printed out my template and I've already folded it. Basically, after you print it, and the template is at scholastic.com, so you can find a link to that, you're going to fold it on each of these lines like that. Then you're gonna fold it in the middle like that. Then you're going to fold it like a hamburger, cut it with your scissors. So you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. Fold it like a hot dog, push it together and fold it again so that the back cover and the front cover are out in mine is not quite right aligned. My printer does not like this. Now this is for a zine panel that I am presenting this weekend. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a demonstration for the kids, something that was already made and assembled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna start doing my illustrations. Now, I've already done one of these. I did one of these many years ago when I was a SCAG kid and I'm gonna bring copies of that as well. But for me, I'm a visual person. Having it all spread out like that is harder than having it in its little book form where I can kind of figure out what I want to do with it. I guess I'm going to need to trim these two middle pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sketching the interior of my zine with a non-photo blue pencil. And since I was a genius and I didn't figure out what I wanted to do first, I guess I need to do some thumbnails. I'm gonna do them here. And I want something really simple and cute. And I sort of imagined something that played with the notion of a character that is self-aware that they're in a book. doing it as a tiny thumb lint nail like this. And you could do that digitally. Sort of lets me figure things out before I commit. All right, so I've got my very silly, very basic premise down. And I'm gonna go with something really simple for the art style. And I'm basically just kind of sketching it in first. See, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm kind of forcing it to work within the conceit. It'd be cute though if I tacked on a little piece of paper right there to kind of extend her head over the page. This should actually be way over here. Cause I want it to look kind of like she's turning a page and what I'm probably gonna do is just black the background out. So we have our sketch sort of completed. This is what it's gonna look like when we unfold it and begin to kind of tighten the art up a little bit. So I'm still going to keep the style really simple since this is a mini comic and I want this to be kind of quick and hopefully easy to read, especially because I'm doing something kind of meta with the comic, not clever meta, just meta with the comic itself. Oh, 
Okay, so that is the cover. Now I'm gonna rotate it so I can get a look at page one and two spread. Now, if you were doing a mini like this for distribution, what I would recommend is that you print your template, convert it to blue, well, rather, download your template, open it in Photoshop or some other graphic program, convert it to blue lines, and I have tutorials on how to do that at natosoup.blogspot.com. Print that out, do your sketching and your inking, scan that, and then drop the blue lines, and then print your final for sale copies. But since I am doing this for a workshop, I thought it might be most helpful for the kids and adults participating in the workshop to be able to see the template in addition to the comic itself. And if you were doing this for uh, reproduction, you might also want to uh, basically print the template as blue lines on a nicer piece of paper, something that you enjoy working on. This is just copy paper. This is, and I also wanted that so that um, I could allow the participants to look at the original and see the original, sort of have it as like a whole unit. Because when I do, as you guys know, when I do my comic process, it's often done in various stages. And sometimes that can be kind of hard for people to see how that comes together as a whole. So for this panel I, or workshop, I guess, I want it to be very obvious how it comes together as a whole. I want it to click as soon as possible because I have a feeling most of the participants are gonna be people who are not super familiar with making comics, making mini comics, making zines, that sort of thing. And I wanna make it as accessible to them as possible from the get-go. So I'm actually going to present two types of ways you can very quickly and easily make mini comics. So this is just the first of those two methods. And I actually personally find it to be the more complicated of the two because you've got this folding, but it does utilize just one sheet of paper and it really invites uh, simple cartoony art styles because those kind of make best use of the space. And what I plan on doing is I plan on having cop this, the original copy, and then also printed copies, and maybe I'll let them practice folding on these so that um, when they're ready to make their own, it's easier for them, and they can also have one of these to take home with them. What I might do is I might white out these page numbers and then better integrate them with... Uh, with what I have going on on the page. And that way they still have the page numbers for reference, but they make sense within the context of this story of a little person kind of exploring the fact that they are a character in a comic book. Now I'm sketching in non-photo blue because it allows me, there's numerous reasons to use non-photo blue. This is non-photo blue lead. Um, used to be in the old days when you would use a photocopier to copy these, it would drop this blue. It couldn't, it wasn't photosensitive enough to pick up this blue. That's no longer the case. However, it is incredibly easy if you have a graphic editing program like Photoshop to drop this blue once we've gone over it with black ink. So that's why I'm sketching it with blue. And it's been a part of my drawing process for almost a decade now. So it's almost impossible for me to do my sketching without having that blue. And I am going to, on this original, I am going to leave the blue on there for participants to be able to see. Since that's part of the process and since a lot of artists who still sketch traditionally and a lot of digital artists will still sketch with a blue. Um, a lot of artists will also sketch with like a red or a pink, just any sort of uh, colored underdrawing to help differentiate between the sketch lines and the final lines. And you can erase them if you want to. I choose to leave them in and then drop them digitally. So they are part of my original, but they're not part of the reproductions that I sell or I give away. And I probably could have waited a beat here and had her have like a light bulb moment where it's like, oh, I could turn the page. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you're doing this digitally, a very easy way to do this is to do your eight illustrations and then um, open your template in, again, a photo editing doc, uh, program like Photoshop and then lay it out according to the template. And that's how we did it at SCAD. This is actually my first time doing this uh, traditionally. So it's fun to learn different methods and to be honest, when it comes to doing panels with libraries and schools, I often can't count on them to have uh, computer equipment or computer programs for me to use and I can't supply enough for everyone. So I find that um, teaching people how to do things traditionally, especially for something as simple as this, makes it more egalitarian. This is something they can go home and do. They're not reliant on software. They're not reliant on the library to provide resources for them. So it's why usually if I'm asked to pitch a panel and they don't um, ask me to do something on digital techniques, which I'd be happy to do, I tend to go for traditional because that's something that a lot of people can supply on their own and they don't need a lot of program experience. And uh, I do try to keep the materials very simple. I made the mistake of um, when I did some workshops for Nashville Public Library, I actually purchased a lot of supplies for the kids so that they wouldn't, so they could use what I was showing them how to use and they wouldn't be reliant on me bringing them in. And I think they still use those supplies and they don't still use me. So now I keep it even simpler than that. And I ask that the libraries provide their own supplies because I am not able to afford to supply that kind of stuff out of pocket. And considering the workshop I'm preparing this for is an unpaid workshop, um, it's even more important that I try to keep my, my cost in producing the panel as low as possible since I'm a comic artist and I don't know. I mean, you guys might've heard of like Rob Liefeld being rich, but most of us are not. <laughs> so trying to keep the materials very affordable and it doesn't get much cheaper than colored lead an ink pen and printer paper. Plus this is something that um, in terms of like zines, this is, you know, kind of the easiest, cheapest production method. So it keeps the bar really low. Hopefully people will replicate this because that's always my goal with the workshops that I do is that people will take what I've taught them and go do it at home or do it in their own lives. My leg keeps that snapping because I'm drawing on glass. I'm drawing on a very hard surface and I'm applying a lot of pressure because when I draw quick, I tend to bear down really hard. I carve my images. I might be out of lead like this. But I'm excited to share this with you guys too. Not because this is some innovative zine drawing technique, but because this is just yet another way you can make a comic that's fun, that's very immediate, that gives you a connection with your audience and it doesn't require a lot of skills. You could do this with stick figures. It doesn't require hardly any investment at all. You just need a normal stapler. You don't even need a long arm stapler. Um, you need a printer if you're gonna print a template out and you need um, some patience. And that's about all you need. And there's something I really love about comics that fit in that category. Hopefully they'll be able to follow this. Hopefully it's easy enough. Um, if not, I will have copies of Shat for them, which is about a cat, but it's also about a small Cajun girl harassing her cat. So it's a chat with a girl and her cat, with Shat being the French word for cat. I thought I was really clever at the time and I wanted to do like eight of them in various colors with different themes between this three-year-old child and her cat who loves and tolerates her. And like all my best comic plans, it got pushed aside for other things that needed to happen. I'm gonna draw the 
get really, really meta and draw the comic cover as a comic on the back. I really, really like comics about comics, comics about making comics. Though I don't do too many of my own, maybe I should since I love them so much. Okay, so we have our mini comic all sketched out. The next step is to start inking it. I'm gonna remove the eraser schmutz from my vicinity. And I'd love to have a scrap sheet of paper to use as a bit of a hand rest since I tend to drag my hand. So the materials for this portion of the evening are hopefully going to be pretty simple. I have a eight millimeter or 0.8 millimeter Sakura Micron. I have one of my favorite brush pins and I've reviewed a lot of these at natosoup.blogspot.com but this is a Kuratake Fudego Kochi and this is a Fude pen. It's got a very small brush nib on the end so I can get nice kind of dynamic lines. And I am also going to use some Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. And I think I'm going to re-letter the uh, page numbers in the front cover so that they better blend in with the page and so that they appear intentional. And uh, I don't know, hopefully push the conceit of a comic about a comic. I just think that's a really cute conceit and I really hope it um, appeals to the audience members. For the cover-up job, you're gonna need a small cup of clean water and ideally a synthetic brush. It is inking time and I was just sort of mentally debating whether or not I wanted to do my corrections first and then ink on top of that or ink, do the corrections and then ink on top of that. I think the easiest thing to do is to probably go ahead and do the corrections and then relabel this. You can also use whiteout or whiteout tape or a white gel pen for this. You don't have to use Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. That's what I use, that's what I have on hand. But I encourage you to use anything you have on hand that you're familiar with, that's easy for you to use. All right, I'm going to give that a chance to dry. All right, so I can actually kind of still see through it, which works for me. You guys get to see my awesome hand lettering. But that's not the point. And pardon me if I mess up, I have a cat forcing his way into my lap. He is unwanted in my lap at this moment. To all you artists who lie and say you want a cat in your lap at all times, I call your bluff. That's bull. Oh man, I meant to do that differently. All right, time to cover up the cover up. That happens. Sometimes we multi-goof. Because what I want to do is I want it to blend in a little bit better with the art. And then for these here, since this is a demonstrator and I want people to be able to follow along, I'm just going to put a small page number at the top. Okay, so I still have some wet paint over here and also didn't do a super good job covering up my correction. So I will redo it and give this a chance to dry. All right, so it's still a little bit, no, actually it's dry. We can go, we can move forward, woo! All right, so for best results, of course, you would be inking on something nicer than printer paper. Um, a 
any kind of bristol would give you better results but you're not going to be able to do the folding thing um, as easily as you would with just cheap printer paper so what i would recommend for those of you who want to do these to trade to distribute or to sell you do it on bristol you scan it you do your corrections you print it you fold it you sell those um again though i really wanted to have my demo be very accessible for uh, my participants and very immediate so they can immediately see the correlation between what I'm distributing and the demonstration and what they're making. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this uh, using that pen we discussed earlier. And I'm gonna do that in time-lapse.
All right, so I've got this all inked. I'm gonna refold it to demonstrate. Oops, wants to come undone there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go scan this and I'm going to make copies of this and I'll show you guys how to assemble them. This is the scanned and printed version. I dropped those blue lines. I'm gonna show you guys how to fold it. This is what I'm gonna have ready made for people at the workshop. Give them a chance to kind of practice so they don't ruin theirs. You can use a bone folder on these if you really, really need those crisp edges. You could also use the end of a butter knife or you can just use your fingers. You don't have to actually use anything super special. Now this printed a little bit funny. My template printed a little bit funny to begin with. So um, I might need to trim these before I hand them out because it probably will affect how they come together. All right. Hot dog, fold it. Oop. And then hamburger fold again. See, we're a little bit off that middle mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix it and then I'm gonna have to run it through my paper trimmer and I'm gonna have to do that, I guess, for everybody's. Cause I'd hate to pass out something that doesn't quite come together. All right, hamburger fold it and cut. And then you guys see it will eventually come together. Not quite, I goofed it come together like this. So I did not do the neatest job folding or cutting that and things are a little bit not quite aligned. I need to do a better job of figuring out and printing the template, but I think this gives you guys a pretty good idea of these little one page into eight page mini comics. I've even seen people um, do a separate mini on the inside so that, you know, if you reverse how it's folded, you get two minis in one. But hopefully that will inspire you guys to make your own super mini mini comics.